Hey everyone, just got back from a fantastic swear box gig in Huddersfield. Got absolutely wet through unloading the car just now, but uh, but we've had a great time, so so who cares? Uh, this is going to be a video about something that really grinds my gears, and uh, people who, well, basically people who slag me off. Um, so a bit of background, what it's about. Times are tough for musicians at the moment. Not a lot of gigs around. Um, awful lot of venues have disappeared. But I've got a very full diary. It's February and my 2018 diary is almost completely full. Um, and um, there are some musicians about who um, aren't particularly happy about that. And uh, kind of blame me and people like me for taking all the gigs. Um, and I, said, I think that some of these, I think that some of these people think that, you know, I don't know, like it won't get back to me. But in the music business, pretty much everything that everyone says about everyone gets back to them, because everybody talks about. It. Anyway, um, I've got broad shoulders, you know. Uh, it pisses me off a bit, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to cry about it. But what it is is, these are people who uh, the bands are not busy. They wish they had more gigs, and uh, they see people like me who are in multiple bands, and and blame it on that. Oh, you know, I can't get in at so and so venue because you know the. They're booked up, you know, because Jamie Malander's there, like, every other week with a different band. And um, and they make out like it's, um, like, it's just a slightly different lineup and a different name and we're doing the same thing, which is utter bollocks. Um, the way it works is, at one time, you could easily fill a diary with enough gigs uh, and be in one band. But that's just not the case anymore. So instead of sitting on my ass, moaning and complaining about it, I've done something about it. I'm in multiple bands. So let me give you a, a kind of an overview of how this might work. Right, so there's a venue called the Imperial in Mexico, booked by the lovely Helen Taylor. And um, a few years ago, she booked the Paddy Maguire Band. And we went and did a gig and had a stormy night and so she booked us back and I explained to Helen that I got this other band called Swearbox and Helen must have thought well you know the Paddy Maguire band is a decent standard of band so his other band's probably all right as well so Swearbox played there and we had a great night went down a bomb full room so then when it comes to doing the diary again, Helen gives me a couple of gigs for Paddy Maguire and a couple of gigs for Swearbox. So where I would have just like, you know, maybe two gigs in the diary for the year, I've got four. And then uh, the Imperial started having acoustic acts on a Sunday and I'd just started up the acoustic side of Swearbox. And so she books that. And Helen also books another venue, uh, the Old Town Hall. And they have a swear box a couple of times. They have the Paddy Maguire Band a couple of times. They don't have the acoustic version of the swear box, but they do have Iridium 77. So you can see from that how, um, how I'm managing to fill my diary up, even though there's a, a shortage of venues. And the thing that annoys me about this is is that every band that I offer will come and do a completely different show there's sometimes a little overlap of musicians like uh, Tim who plays drums with the Paddy Maguire band um, I'll use him in Swearbox sometimes and he's in Iridium um, and Gav who's, who plays guitar in Iridium 77 um, sometimes plays guitar for Swearbox. But, you know, it's irrelevant really because 
each project does a completely different show has a completely different set of material each one goes down it goes down spectacularly well in just about every venue that we play in and uh, and I'm very proud of all of them um, so I, re I really don't I don't see the issue you know like to me if if your band is not busy enough then instead of sitting at the computer right or in your phone typing out some long whinge some long rant about how you know yeah you know, you've not got enough gigs and you can't get in venues uh, all the gigs are taken by people like me people are in lots of different bands blah 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 instead of whinging and moaning about it why not there's just a suggestion get off your ass and have a look at yourself and have a look at your band and then spend your time developing it, improving it. You know, like there's so many bands out there who've been using the same tired old poster forever. You know, like why, why are you sat on Facebook whinging? You should be doing something about that. Get a new poster designed and printed and sorted. You know, freshen things up a bit. Have a look at your set list. Are you still doing the same tired old set that you've been doing forever? Well, bring some new tunes in there, you know? What you're wearing on stage. That's the thing. A lot of local bands just go on stage looking absolutely shambolic. Look at what you're wearing. You know, get some new gear. Think of new things to say between songs. New ways to engage the audience. And... Another thing, I was talking to a, a landlord recently who said to me, have you heard of this band? Do you know these guys that told me the name of the band? And I said, yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. He said, oh, what they like as a band? I said, well, you know, they're, they're a decent band. They're, they're not the best band in the world, but they're a pretty good band. And he said, oh, yeah, they came in here. I tried to get a gig. And uh, he said, but he said, the guy who was talking to me, he said he was just rude, arrogant, rude, full of himself. He said, I took an instant dislike to him, so I just told him the diary was full. Right? So what's that tell you? The other thing was, he said, um, he said the guy was banging on about how good his band was. He said, but, you know, I've never heard of you. Have you, have you got any local gigs coming up where I could pop in and see you? Have you got anything I could watch? No YouTube links? Nothing. No CD? No advertising materials with him. Didn't even bring a poster. Nothing. So, what do you expect from the guy? You know, it's not, it's not a charity. Um, nobody owes you anything. You don't just get a gig because you send a message on Facebook to a pub or you pop into a pub. It don't work like that, you know. If you want the work, you've got to fight for it. You've got to make sure that your band is the best band that it could possibly be. Presented in the best way, with the best advertising. You know, like, one, one, one of these guys in particular who's been slagging me off. That's all he uses Facebook for. Just moaning and whining about stuff. You know, like, when, when his band's got a gig... You don't see anything on Facebook. There's no, um, there's no gig invite. There's no flyers on there. He didn't use any of the local groups, you know, about what's on where, to share information about where his band's playing or anything. Nothing, you know. So, think about that. If I play uh, a local venue like um, last night, I played the White Lion in Sheffield, right? So. I used Facebook, I did the invite, I did the flyers, got the posters out and everything. Reminded everybody about it, told everybody about it, probably pestered everyone's eyes out about it. But it was full. So even if we were a shite band, then the landlord would have had a great night because we filled the place. So a lot of money will presumably have gone over the bar. 
Um, so be happy even if we were terrible. You know, use this. Think about it. Be the best that you can possibly be. Think about it like a business. You know, what's your gear like? Is your gear shagged? What's your PA like? You know, I mean, I mean the, the amount of bands that are going out there with gear that's just absolute dog shit. You know, and it sounds like crap. And they've, they've had the same PA for like ever and a day. You know, what do you expect? You know, like, you could be the best band in the world, but if you're playing through knackered speakers and old gear that's ready for knackers you are, but, you know, you've got to be good. So, instead of slagging me off, right, and moaning about Jamie Malland has got all the gigs, well, maybe there's a reason why I've got the gigs and you've not got the gigs, you know? Less of this and more of this.